So welcome to the taster session. A kind of uh, introduction to the strategy and innovation program. Uh, I hope you have been uh, enjoying the taster week so far uh, and the information you've been receiving uh, from my colleagues, uh, especially uh, if you joined uh, other sessions. My name is Emmanuel Kipreos uh, and I am the academic director of the MSc Strategy and Innovation. Uh, and I'm joined today by Dr. Rajibul Hassan, Program Director of the MSc in Marketing, who is going to assist in the Q&A session. I have uh, probably interacted uh, in some capacity with uh, some of you already, uh, but I look forward to meeting all of you. So book your one on one consultation session uh, with me. And I also look forward to working with you both as program director as well as a lecture of a very hands on module that we will discuss uh, in a few moments. My background uh, before joining academia uh, was in the financial markets. Uh, so as a trader and a broker of equity derivatives, and like some of you, I decided to reinvent myself, uh, jumpstart things, so to say, and gain additional qualifications to remain relevant uh, in an ever evolving world. And this is also the reason why I'm such a believer in this program, because the MSc strategy and innovation helps you do exactly that. Now, why strategy and innovation? Well, typically, when we talk about strategy, a uh, first idea that comes to mind is the one expressed in the quote attributed to the famous philosopher, Ralph Waldo Emerson, uh, who said in a simple way that if a man were to make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, the whole world will make a beaten path to his door. Well, what do you feel about this idea? Does it resonate with how you think about strategy and innovation? how strategy and innovation is conducted, how competition in the market happens. Well, is it true that if you are innovative, you know, if you reinvent the wheel, so to say, you're bound to be successful? Well, if this is true, why do we even talk about strategy in the first place? So there are two major assumptions that we will bust right now. First, that automatically, as soon as you have a better idea, an innovative idea, the whole world will know about it and they will run to you. And second, that once you have the best product, your competitive advantage, your success over your competitors will be long lasting. But in fact, there is a huge difference between having an idea and delivering this idea, making this idea successful by delivering it into daily use. I mean, how do you deliver that idea into daily impact? You know, how are you going to get 50,000 people to use your idea every day? How are you going to get a million people to use your idea every day? So even if you have a brilliant idea, you need to have strategy. Secondly, is it automatic that as soon as you have a great idea, your competitive advantage will be long lasting. When American Airlines in 1981 introduced the Frequent Flyer Miles program, a truly innovative program aiming at giving American Airlines a competitive advantage over its competitors in an arguably difficult industry, how long do you think it lasted till their major competitors imitated American Airlines and introduced similar programs. Three weeks. So you see how fast your competitive advantage can be eroded. So you need to ask, how fast can my idea be imitated? And to illustrate the importance of combining strategy and innovation and the importance of the right strategy in particular, uh, and what basically we will be teaching in this program, let me show you something. Do you know this company? Probably not. Maybe if you were in the States in the early 2000, uh, you would have known this company, but you certainly know this company, right? I mean, who doesn't know Netflix these days? And you might say many things about uh, Netflix, how great of a company and how innovative with their algorithm and so on uh, they are. 
but one thing is certain that there was a time that they were the underdog, so facing impossible odds, strategically speaking, against them. Now, in 1999, when Netflix came into the market, they came into the video rental market, they were the small guys. Blockbuster was the king of the hill, controlling the video rental market with 9,000 stores in the US alone. But Netflix came in with a different business model. In fact, the same business model that they use today. Instead of charging per movie, like it was the classic way of video rentals, uh, like Blockbuster did, they were charging a monthly subscription. Customers paid a certain fixed amount per month and rented as many movies as they wanted. Uh, and in fact, you could keep the movies for more days than normally Blockbuster uh, would typically allow their customers. There were no late fees, but to rent new movies, you had to return the other ones and so on and so forth. So that was the Netflix model. That was vastly different from the Blockbuster model as Blockbuster was generating at least $300 million per year in late fees in the early 2000s. So in, in fact, in some years, that was more than the total operating profit of the entire company. So they were really dependent on late fee revenue for their profitability. So Blockbuster had to decide, would they cut late fees which obviously customers disliked to compete with Netflix. So would they really go after uh, Netflix? And this is where innovation meets strategy. Netflix was anticipating Blockbuster's next move uh, because Blockbuster underestimated Netflix and thought of short-term gains. So Blockbuster had millions of customers compared to the few hundred thousand uh, subscribers for Netflix, and they wrongly predicted that Netflix would not grow, that it was basically a niche player that appealed to a specific segment of the market, and that they would never go mainstream. So they didn't really cut late fees. And for some time, it seemed like their strategy was working. Uh, in fact, they reached their peak in 2004. And they even managed to survive the transition from VHS to DVD, but they had started losing customers. So, uh, and in fact, they were wrong to underestimate, as we know now, Netflix. But, and, and by the time they realized that and they eliminated late fees, it was too late. And in 2010, Blockbuster, with their 9,000 video stores in the US alone, filed for bankruptcy with one billion in debt. The irony is that in early 2000, the Netflix founders uh, offered to sell Netflix to Blockbuster for $15 million and Blockbuster turned them down. So and Netflix today has a market cap of roughly, as of yesterday, $222 billion. So you see the importance of strategy. But let me give you another example. Do you know this company, MySpace? You might have seen something in some technology museum, although it wasn't really that long ago. But you certainly know this company, right? So who doesn't know Facebook again? Uh, the point is that MySpace was in fact the one dominating the social networking site uh, space until Facebook came onto the scene. And funny enough, in 2005, at the height of MySpace's uh, glory, uh, the CEO, uh, Chris DeWolf, actually met with uh, a Facebook founder, Mark Zuckerberg, to discuss business together. Yeah, and in fact, Mark offered to sell Facebook to MySpace for $75 million, which the CEO of MySpace uh, turned down. So in the spring of 2005, MySpace was really the top dog and more or less the only social network in the US able to write the rules of the game in a way. They were in fact the ones that started the whole idea of social web, social network. Uh, and uh, it was purchased by News Corp, so Murdoch's uh, empire, entertainment empire, for $580 million. Uh, and, and it was a good time because with the backing of Murdoch's empire, they could have done incredible things. But a combination of strategic mistakes 
most prominently uh, the problem that MySpace had been created by people in the entertainment industry, not technology uh, experts, meant that they could not really innovate fast enough uh, in, in, in order to compete. Uh, in fact, they, they didn't see how the culture of social network was changing and was being enabled by technology. So as the founder um, of, uh, of MySpace said, the big problem was over enthusiasm and under execution on the product side because they had all these ideas about products and they thought that they could manage making all these products alone. So they tried to release many projects which were problematic, were glitchy, which confused as well as disappointed the users and the users moved to Facebook. In contrast, Facebook uh, had started to let third party developers right away to create apps on their website, on their site, uh, fostering innovation and growth. And in fact, I heard uh, today that Facebook said that they really want to create a platform for millions of creators of apps to make a living and they will make big announcements in uh, in a few days in the June 2nd big annual event, big tech event that they have. So back to the story, by April 2008, Facebook had overtaken uh, MySpace and never looked back. And in 2009, MySpace was purchased by specific media, media for $35 million, compared with 580 just a few years before. And they shifted their focus to entertainment and music and drifted into oblivion. So you realize that it's not only about the idea, but also about the implementation and long term view of how the company will maintain their competitive advantage. So if we learn anything from this is that strategy and innovation intertwine and a successful strategy is a complex system of factors. Uh, in fact, strategy and innovation often involve complex decisions. Uh, there are many variables that affect your decision and it is important to be able to focus uh, to the most important variables and allow you uh, that, that will allow you to make a decision. Otherwise, there's just too many things going on and because of the bounded rationality of individuals, you will be lost in a sea of options. So you need to narrow down and the point is that in this program, you will learn the tools that will allow you to narrow down your decision process and allow you to think how to tackle real world strategic challenges. So allow you to uh, understand how to adjust the strategy, understand how to revise the strategy, to cope with the changes in the environment. So the objective of the program is to provide you with the knowledge and skills necessary to identify and solve operational and strategic problems that real world uh, organizations face. And the point is, and, and you will see that in fact in the different projects in this program, that at times there will be a lot of discussion and debate because there is no optimal solution. There is no immediate solution. There will be a set of solutions that are feasible given the variable that you need to particularly take into consideration. Uh, if there was an optimal solution, then uh, of course there wouldn't be competitive advantage. Everyone would have uh, reach this position, a perfect market, and then the price uh, that you would charge would be equal to marginal cost. But there is competitive advantage because there are some market players uh, that are able to recognize opportunities uh, in the market in a more refined way. So in this program, we are trying to give you these tools to achieve this uh, and stay relevant, uh, as I said earlier, in an ever evolving world. So how do we do this in the MSC strategy and innovation? Well, we work in three different directions. First, your professional and personal development through career development advice. Second, advanced modules that will ground you uh, well in terms of theory and build your expertise. And third, more practical modules that will help you apply the skills you build into real world strategic problems. So concerning the subjects covered, 
Uh, you will, of course, receive the timetable you when you uh, enroll and you will have an overview of the particular modules. But quickly, you see a very balanced set of modules designed, as we said, to equip you with the skills and knowledge to identify and solve strategic problems. So we start the first semester with strategic management, career planning and development, digital business, uh, innovation, and then the second semester, strategy life that we will have together, financial management, leadership, and actionable insights through uh, research. Now, let me highlight here one of the first modules uh, you'll take, which is career planning and development, or CPD. So this is a really good module in that you will uh, identify your own career goals, you will get a sense of, of where uh, you would like to be heading, and then you will work throughout the semester to enhance your skills and boost your employability. So you're going to work on developing your competencies, and you will probably uncover um, even competencies that you didn't know uh, that you have. So you will receive hands-on training, and along the way, you will receive uh, career advice from industry experts, and all of these will be tailored to your own individual competencies and your own individual goals. So the goal is that you will live with a new set of skills and competencies that you will be able to uh, ready to apply them in the workplace. Also, as you see in the third part, June to August, the third semester, so the summer semester, there will be the summer pathways which is either a business research project or a dissertation. So a business research project is where you work with a company that has partnered already with the School of Business uh, on, on one of their business problems, uh, and on a business problem they have identified, bringing academic research to uh, their business problem, or work placement where you intern with a company, uh, but at the same time you attend a module over the summer uh, related to the placement and career development, uh, and then you will write a world research paper, a report on the placement. Uh, I'm not going to discuss uh, further in detail your summer pathways. I know there might be uh, quite a few questions, but if you do join our program, you will receive several uh, detailed sessions that will uh, explain our summer options and requirements uh, for you. Now, uh, a note here, uh, which is important uh, for us to mention, that this program and all uh, postgraduate programs in the School of Business uh, are created and operated according to the values of the school uh, that we have at the School of Business, namely that we want to train critical thinkers uh, and create impactful knowledge through a multidisciplinary egalitarian approach to learning uh, that is offered by people, so your lecturers that are research informed, active in research, and also externally engaged. So meaning that we have close ties to the industry and industry partners that will enrich your education and interact with you uh, through different uh, events in different ways. So through the industry series or through the consulting projects that we will have with real companies. Uh, so uh, on the live, uh, on strategy live. Now, a short overview of the uh, core modules. We start with the uh, strategic management tools and concepts with Dr. Yazanova. So the goal here is to help you master the concepts and approaches to strategy. So in effect, connect theory to practice, understand how to design and communicate strategy, which will prepare you well for what will come in the second semester, namely Strategy Live, where we will really apply that. Uh, and you will do that through readings, videos, lectures, uh, on theory followed by interactive exercises uh, focused on building skills around case discussion, scenario planning, uh, and presentation and analysis of, of evidence. Then innovation with Dr. Rake. Uh, so this is divided in four themes. First, fundamentals of innovation and entrepreneurship. Secondly, leading innovation and organizational change. Third, building innovation and entrepreneurial organization, and fourth, exploiting innovation and entrepreneurship. And here, the objective is to form your critical judgment of the specific advantages 
and uh, challenges companies face uh, in their innovation activities. So you will uh, critically assess companies' innovation activities. You will evaluate how companies can facilitate entrepreneurial thinking and acting, and you will develop um, the recommendations that will be reflected in uh, implementation. Then we have leadership with uh, Dr. Andreeva. Uh, here, the objective is to prepare you for organizational life, uh, both as a leader as well as a follower. Uh, and the idea here is to uh, critically evaluate various uh, leadership concepts, identify uh, conditions under which it is likely to be effective, and apply then the, um, the concepts in real life situations with the goal to understand better also your leadership preferences, your style, your behavior, uh, in order to develop your leadership um, in, in work and life. So in fact, this past year, uh, students worked on a virtual uh, group project with students from uh, Tohoku University in Japan, uh, and the students collaborated across language, culture, time zones, and technology divides in order to develop the leadership competencies for working in a contemporary global work environment. Last but not least is the module that we will enjoy together, that we will have together, Strategy Live. From strategic management to uh, management consultancy. And here we take uh, concepts and tools from strategic management uh, and uh, from the semester one modules to combine with new content on management consulting skills and apply them to real business problems. So we will learn the rules of engagement, we will design analysis, gather data, uh, interpret results and then present your results. Uh, you will be working in teams and then supported by the lecturing team. You will be um, like strategic consultants use your theoretical knowledge and apply appropriate uh, research methods to a live business challenge uh, with the goal of forming and presenting strategic recommendations to the executives of an organization. Uh, so it really prepares you to identify and practically address real world problems. And of course, we will also work in skills transferable uh, to world of work like soft skills, presentation, networking, that will boost your exposure, which will have a dramatic impact on your work, on, on your career progress, as executives from different organizations will see you in action. So you will become visible as someone who brings solutions. Now, we know that the job of a consultant starts with a client and this is of course key also in this module uh, to this process that we will need uh, we will have live cases where companies or, or organizations put themselves and their strategic needs forward uh, to the students for their analysis for scrutiny for recommendations and this is a very exciting aspect of this module as we have worked with incredible industry partners in, in these uh, past years companies and non-profit organizations such as Medicines on Frontier, Glenway, the Camogie Association, PowerScore Distillery, O'Brien Fine Foods, Aviva, uh, DAA, the Dublin Liberties Distillery and CRS. And we look forward to working with another set of great partners in the next academic year. So thank you again for choosing the uh, MSc Strategy and Innovation and Manuth University for your postgraduate education. Uh, if you haven't applied uh, already, you can do that to pack.ie uh, with the code MH54D for the full-time program and MH55D for the part-time program. Thank you again, um, everyone for joining us uh, this afternoon. And um, uh, I urge you again to book your one-on-one -on -one if you have further questions with me. Uh, and uh, of course, I'm always available on email uh, to also um, uh, book like a, a, a Teams call in order to give you further information on the program.
Thank you again for joining us.